All right, so here's the t-shirt that I'm going to be working on. It is um, it's actually not just a straight cotton shirt. This one is a um, it's one of those cool dry type things. Um, so it's been washed, and let's see what we can create. I've got um, a square metal tray on the inside and I'm just going to fold that all underneath and make a, um, a a surface that I can paint on back in a minute all right so I have strapped it all up to try and keep that all out of the way and give us a nice even surface to work on and because I've got this big bulbous kind of thing hanging out the bottom, I've grabbed this um, box, what else do you call it? And it just sits on an angle across there so that to tilt I can go like that. Uh, I don't have to put my dirty fingers underneath and get it all over the t-shirt. So cross fingers, let's hope this works. <laughs> Ah oh dear. Um, what I'm going to do though, because I have a habit of getting very messy, I'm going to start with gloves on. And the cool thing about starting with gloves on is if your hands get really disgustingly dirty and you need to be able to do something without paint on your hands, you can take your gloves off and then you've got clean hands. How's it get any better than that? I have seen people working with resin who put multiple layers of gloves so that they can take a layer off and do the next thing and then take a layer off and do the next thing. Well, first thing I'm going to do is move this out of the way so that we can prep our, um, our paint tin. Now, I have mixed all my paints and they are still quite thick um, they've been standing probably for 15 minutes since I finished stirring and they tend to thicken up a little bit when you do that so a couple more drips of water and we should be good to go on all of these so let's get that done and as you can see i had to move to a bigger container for my um for my white so let me just do that and get those ready for you all right so they are all mixed up to a reasonably similar consistency um and hopefully we shall get a grand result out of that now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some silicon. And silicon is a, uh, we use silicon in acrylic pouring to create cells or well, what looks like cells. And basically what it is, is we've got water-based paint and we have just added oil. And what the oil does, always tries to do like with any oil and water consistency is to separate and to rise to the top so that's what the silicon is going to try and do and so that as it rises to the top through layers of different colors paints pushes its way up and creates um funky design hopefully that's the target so, uh, zoom you back out. Oh, hold on. I was going to make my tip pot, wasn't I? Now, what I would like to do with this is to um, do a flip cup. And a flip cup is where you take a pot. Where is my pot? I had it just then and I moved it there we go we take a pot this is an old tuna tin with nice smooth sides and we pour 
all the paints in to the pot and uh, layer upon layer I start with the white nice good dollop of white and then I'm gonna go for a dollop of the blue and I'm gonna pour from a reasonably up high level as I'm adding these colors um, and what that does is whoop, means that you miss the paint pot <laughs> oops um, what that means is it it has the force of the pouring out of your down through the paint the other paints that are there so you get a mixing of paints um, let's go around again wash that yellow off the pot and uh, I'm gonna go in with blue again Go in with silver next. And some yellow. And the green. And that's just when one of the things I didn't mention with um when you're mixing paints, always scrape your stick off and then incorporate that back into the pot. Um, otherwise you get a build up of unmixed paints. And uh, that's just not cool. Because then you, you may end up with a patch of paint that comes out that's thicker or doesn't have the same consistency as everything else, doesn't have the same mix as anything else, and it can create problems, especially with the drying. Now I'm not going to put another layer of white on the top of that, because what I'm going to do is move that to one side, bring our container back, and zoom you back out so you can see what I'm doing all right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab um, just this big brush and just create a white base um, which will create a uh, it's almost like gessoing your canvas I suppose but what it makes is a base you'll notice I didn't put any of the silicon into the white oh look there's some of that yellow uh, let me just see if I can tell oh, yep. so this here this corner here I'm gonna move it that's where the neck line is So because we have no silicon in the white, what this is going to do is make sure that there's no interruption by the silicon to the bonding to the t-shirt. And so then if the other paint just bonds to this paint, which it should do, no problem, um, we're going to have a nice bond to the t-shirt and not affected by silicon affecting it so the only thing that's going to affect it now is the bits out of my brush what's right about that i'm not getting all right so i've made a square and hopefully that's gonna also give the paint somewhere to run because once it hits the t-shirt it's not gonna have that moisture content there although being cool dry it could dry faster than i get paint on here so who knows just getting some of these little lumps out 
All right. Uh, I'm not going to be able to flip that from, like normally I'd put the canvas on top and then turn the whole lot over together and do a lift. I can't do that. <laughs> so let's do it. Let's see if I can flip it. Ready, set, go. Whoop. Oh well. We did get some overspray, but not too much. And let's start to let this out. Whoa. Wow. There's a lot of paint on there. <laughs> oh, how does it get any better than that? All right. We're definitely going to have to go past the edges of my square. That's for sure. Hopefully not past the edges of the... Anyway. So... I can already see, I'm going to zoom you in and show you, some of that silicon rising to the top and giving us cells already, which is super exciting. I'm not sure I've chosen the right colour yellow to go with this peachy pink t-shirt, but hey, if she hates it, she lives in another town and I don't have to know that she doesn't wear it. <laughs> Oh, I like it. So, that's important. Okay, so now I'm just going to get my flame out and just pop some of these air bubbles. Being very careful not to burn the paint or the t-shirt. And um, I'm seeing some air bubbles that didn't pop. Some really big, gigantic ones, so... Just gonna and now I'm going to tilt the box. I'm gonna zoom me back out and tilt the box and get some space and stretch some of these cells. So let's go that way first. right out to the edge of that corner which I painted because I don't want any of those paint, painted corners showing through. And then yep I've covered that and you can see how the um, the, the shapes of the cells uh, holding quite nicely there's a lot of air bubbles being uncovered so I'm going to give it another quick blast pop some of these bigger ones if you're using a something like a pin or a stick to try and pop your bubbles make sure you dry it off so that the friction of the dryness otherwise you just end up pushing the bubble around like I just did All right, I'm going to leave those there and I'll pop them again once I've tilted some more. So, some of them are popping anyway. I've tried to center this square of the square of, that I've got inside the t-shirt in the t-shirt so if I get it centered on the square then it should look centered on the t-shirt that's my target 
So now I'm going to pull it back across. And down a little bit more. Just need to spread some of this paint out. It is very thick. And um, you know, as I've had with some of the t-shirts I've made for myself, you end up with quite a chunk that doesn't really move. And on such a breathable fabric like this, you kind of want it to be able to breathe and have space. It's starting to slow down, which tells me it's thinning out, which is good. Just want to try and even that top left-hand corner out with the rest of it. And I'm right, that yellow doesn't go with this peach colour. Oh, how's it getting any better? All right. How does that look? What do you reckon? It's almost square. Kind of a rounded square. Still a lot of air bubbles in there and that's the yellow as well. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have put the yellow in. Another way I've found sometimes works with air bubbles is just to give it a bit of a bang. Sometimes works. Sometimes doesn't. The heat, the uh, the heat and the stick are the most effective. But I've just lost my pin that I use as my stick. Where did I put that? There it is. Found it. Stop looking. I found it. This was on a plain white t-shirt. It would look amazing. And my favorite access consciousness question in times like this is, what's right about this? I'm not getting. Now, the, as I read out to you, the instructions on this paint recommend to heat set it um, for 30 seconds. And because the paint is so thick and because we've also added um, Floetrol and silicon and stuff like that, the last t-shirt that I did using this stuff, which was... Um, the only one I've ever heat set did a weird bubbly thing and this t-shirt that I'm wearing that I just showed you has lasted I mean I wore it 
every second day I'd wear it, wash it, wear it, wash it, wear it, wash it, wear it, wash it for about oh, a good month, two months maybe. Uh, and then I kind of it got came to winter and I kind of petered out on wearing t-shirts. But um, it has lasted, as I showed you at the beginning, it has lasted really well. And so I'm quite happy not to heat set it. So, but this looks like a photo of the world. It's cool. It's a square planet. <laughs> oh, how does it get any better than that? So I am just going to leave this to dry. I'm going to let it sit and uh, I'm going to make sure that it is sitting reasonably level. It does look like it might be slightly leaning to that direction. Just with the way that the paint is. So I might, I'm going to check it's level and just leave it. Come back and see it once it's dry. Uh, hoping I've got as many of the air bubbles as I can. And, uh, yeah, what can you see in this? You know, I'm already seeing, actually, a face with a nose and a chin and then big amazing hair. And so this could be the body coming through of and, and out of, you know, this could be a, a mermaid. It could be, and then if you look. There's the eye and the mouth of the big whaley type thing. Or even um, going by the colour, it could be a tortoise, turtle, tortoise thing, you know, what those big things with shells on their back. Um, I'm going to get you down and show you up close. There's a couple of patches in here where the cells are doing weird stuff. Uh, so hopefully that's not going to affect it long term as it goes through the wash. But let's get you down and show you what I see close up. Oh, my lights come on. That's funky. Uh, so we have got some cool cells. We've got lots of these... Um, underlying cells I call them they they haven't erupted out the top but they've got a almost got a layer of the yellow sitting over top of blue cells or something and that's what I'm seeing as the face of the tortoise there you go this blue area here is beautiful I really like it Got a funky cell just there. Look at that. That could be the eye of some sea creature. I've been watching that Blue Planet documentary again. Can you tell? <laughs> and this is where I was saying the cells have done something weird. Now I don't know whether I hit it a bit heavy with the torch and that's like sealed the paint and then the cells have popped through i'm not really sure what's going on there if, if you've had this before and you know what you did to cause it please let me know in the comments <laughs> but there's some really cool stuff happening in this i like it and i hope my niece likes it too so there you go guys Oh, there's the face that I was talking about. You got a little button nose and a chin. And the hair, and there's her little tail, swishy, wishy tail. So you could definitely pull a mermaid out of that if you wanted to. I've got to think about what I'm going to do with this, whether I'm going to add anything. Uh color wise or embellishment wise but I will be back 
once it's dried and show it to you before the end of this video but before we end this section I am noticing in this pot some funky 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 stuff happening and we've got some cool as lacing happening and I'm wondering if I can capture some of that on a cabochon and maybe give her a matching pendant just pulling the bulk back all right so I'm gonna pop you up onto the camera stand and uh, we'll see what we can capture in there all right so some of you might be wondering what is she talking about I've never watched any of your videos before. What does she mean she's going to capture that? Um, right here on the end of the stick, I have what's called a cabochon. It's a glass cabochon. Um, it's flat on one side and rounded on the top. And it's often used in pendant jewellery or jewellery of some description. And you put a photograph or uh, something pretty on the flat side and then... You look through the rounded side at the picture and you can put that into a necklace or something like that um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the flat side into the paint and hopefully grab something that looks funky and cool and um, There you have it. Something that looks funky and cool. Um, and then all I do is just pop it down on the ground and with paint side up, obviously, and just leave it to dry. Then once it's dry, then we can start to play with it. Uh, now, there's not much else happening in this At the moment, oh, what did I just create? Oh, looky, looky. Oh, I like that. That looks like a, um, a landscape, you know, with the sky and the hills. So let's grab that as well. So all I've got is I've got some poster putty or blue tack on the end of a stick. And I stick that onto the round side of the, the cabochon and then grab a tissue and just give the flat side a nice polish up. Make sure there's no big chunks of anything or because anything that's left on that side when you dip it in the paint it gets trapped inside the guess what I just did? Drop the cabochon in the paint splattered paint across my landscape it's all right I can wash that I have a pot in the sink next to me just exactly for that reason <laughs> I'm a bit annoyed about my landscape though but what it has created is a funky little thing down here so while that's sitting there let's grab that out and be a little bit more careful in my cleaning routine that it doesn't do the same thing again and if you're wanting to know where I get these cabochons from I get them on Amazon with matching pendant bases you can also buy bracelets and all sorts of stuff and you can get them in different shapes and sizes and So that's quite funky. That'll look cool on a bracelet actually. Now I'm still going to grab that piece and the cool thing about this is um, if you grab it, let it dry, have a look at it the next day once it's dry and um, 
if you don't like it you just stick it in some water and the paint floats straight off the glass now I'm hearing some of you say well if the paint floats straight off the glass how does it stay on to make jewelry well um, what I do is I scrape the paint back Oops, come on there scrape the paint back so that the sides of the cabochon are clear of paint and then I use an epoxy glue to glue the oh that still looks pretty anyway I like it maybe it could be upside down and it's fishy swimming in the sea I'll decide that once it's dry so I leave them to dry and uh, once they're dry as I say scrape the paint off the sides of them and use a waterproof glue to stick the pendant sides to the glass and trap the paint inside um, I never guarantee that they are waterproof but uh, it's as close as I can get them you could um, just dip them into resin just the same way we dip them into paint scrape the paint back to the edges and dip in resin so that the resin comes round the paint and sticks to the glass and then you could maybe have something fun and funky and phenomenal that you could I've, I've seen people do wire wrapping around them once they've got their paint sealed in a lot of people what they do is they would um, pour the paint out onto some substrate whether it be butcher paper or cardboard like I've got here and then glue that to the underside of the glass and cut it out and I've made them like that they work really well but I never get around to doing it <laughs> this is my cheats method it is fast and easy and I actually get it done so um yeah how much fun can you have playing with cabochons check the link in the description on where to find them um it is an affiliate link and if you buy from there um amazon gifts me something like four percent of the purchase price you you don't pay any more by the way they that's their advertising dollar they're paying me to advertise them um and that's how i actually buy my cabochons using the money that I get from referring you guys so thank you very much I'm very grateful so anyway we have got three cabochons and a funky t-shirt that looks like a view of the planet and they're drying and I will be back once they are dry which in your time will be three two one Hey, well there we go uh it is now this has taken ages to dry i have had um this drying for what feels like days and days and days i don't even know what day i pulled it to be honest um i think it was sunday and it's now tuesday but it might have been earlier than that. It might have been Saturday or even Friday. And it's still not 100% dry. I probably have used too much of the fluid, the fabric paint medium. And yeah, I've had to, because I've had a lot of rain, um and it's been cool even though it is summer um i have had the heater going which has not excited me and under normal circumstances i wouldn't have done that 
but this is a rush job. I need to give it to my niece tomorrow. <laughs> um, so there we go. I am pulling this off and we will have a look and hopefully it will work. <laughs> So I've got no other choice. And oh my god, it's not gonna come off my backing. Come on, up you come. Oh crikey. Glad I'm doing it today and not leaving it another day because. could become permanent and that would not be a good idea all right so that is how much of it has stuck it's yeah there is a good deal of white where I did the prep patch That must have been where I put my my tin down to, to do the choosing of the colours. Alright, so there we go. Well, it's off. And the underside looks pretty much like what we just saw on the thing. So... We have a t-shirt and it has a painting on it and while you were away I signed it with the same white paint that looks like a two now um, and it's tech it's touch tacky so I'm gonna not wrap it I might have to take it unwrapped and um, present it unwrapped but that's what she asked for she asked for an auntie mickey painting on a t-shirt on a piece of clothing so that's what she's getting and um how's it get any better than this i might slide a um fridge tray under there just to keep it separate from the back just for another night take it inside and let it set a bit more let's have a look how the pendants came out they're still tacky too i reckon it's the way i mix the paint so somebody's doing fireworks it's christmas night christmas day night here in rotorua new zealand and uh it is the neighbors are doing Fireworks, how's it getting any better than that? So I quite like that. I would have liked it better if I hadn't splashed those two bits in there. Oh. But hey, that's the way it happens. I really like this one. This one makes me look feel like a volcano splurting out or a mud pool Rotorua is famous for its thermal mud pools um, we are a thermal area here in Rotorua so we have steam rising out of the steam vent out of the road vent road water was it called flood water vents in the winter this one does I wonder if I should put it that way it looks like a headland and a very bubbly lake and a slightly smoother sky up the top Let's 
see if I can make him more clarity. The reflections are always fun when I'm doing this at night because we've got so much light going on. But I like it. I like that one. I like so two out of three isn't bad. And I do like I do like this painting as a whole. And the colour combo is starting to grow on me. The um the yellow's kind of faded a little bit in intensity as it's dried, and so we it's not quite so horrendous as it was, but I do like it. I do like it, and I'm hoping that my niece likes it too. And, uh, hey, I've always got a backup T-shirt. If she hates it, I'll make her a new one. How does it get any better than that? At least she's got something to have on Boxing Day when we have our family Christmas. So, I adore you all. I'm so grateful that you have hung out with me on this video and uh, if you're having fun with acrylic pouring come join us at acrylic pouring for fun on facebook and uh, we've still got another few days of this december challenge which is upcycling and uh, who knows what january's challenge will be what else is possible let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas and um I will see you in the very near future. In fact, probably tomorrow I will have another video for you. So hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing. And uh, you know, if there's if you want to buy the cabochons or the trays to put those in, well, if you want to buy my cabochons, let me know. They, those three are for sale. Um, but if you want to buy them to paint on, there's a link in the description below. If you're watching on a mobile device, you might have to hit the little down arrow bit to see the full description. And in there is a link to Amazon to those. And if you use that link, then I get a little cut of their advertising dollar and it costs you no extra. So I'd be super grateful if you use those. And I will see you... Oh, I might even put a link to the decor art um, fabric medium that I've used. It might not be the same bottle, they might have updated it. Um, but I'll put a link to that in the description as well if I remember. If I don't remember, remind me. <laughs> I adore you all. Thank you again for joining me. How much fun can you have and what else is possible? Bye-bye.